Welcome to the help video series of Center Price Data Integrator. In this episode, we are going to learn how to use the workflows. We are going to learn all the details of the different type of uh, maps, the linking, different type of actions that you can use inside a workflow. A workflow is used to orchestrate your jobs and your flows. Shared on the screen is a sample where we are running a data flow and the data flow is using source files from a directory. So for each file inside, this, inside the directory, we are going to run the same data flow. And depending on if it runs successfully or with an error, we are going to send out an email to the owner of the job. And uh, also on this step, check for the errors. If there's a certain number of errors in the flow, we are going to do the same thing, that is send an email to the owner. Or if it runs successfully, then we're going to go ahead and delete the source file. So this is the orchestration and we are going to arrive to the sample and uh, start from the beginning. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. Go to the file menu, new and uh, create a new workflow. The goal of a workflow is to orchestrate your jobs, meaning you specify the steps in your flow and uh, link the flow using some links and I'm going to describe what type of links are supported by Centerprise. Before that let's have a look at the other features those are going to help you in orchestrating your flow. You can have use of sources that means you can point to any of uh, the sources such as the file sources or even uh, database table sources or ADO.NET meta data collections or file system entry sources and use that data from the source uh, that is going to help you in your orchestration. Similarly, you can use the maps and transformations and parsers and pretty much everything that is available in the toolbox here. Going back to our example that we, we want to arrive at, in this example, our first step is to read files from file system. That means we want to read all the files from a directory and uh, all the subdirectories inside that directory and use those files as source inside the data flow. So in this case, let's go ahead and drag and drop our first source that is file system on entry source and that becomes our first step. Now we go to the properties of the file system and uh, point it to a directory uh, where it's going to watch for the files and where it's going to read all the files from. So I go to a file directory and uh, put a filter. That means it is going to pick only these type of files, that is only Excel files, and include all items in subdirectories. If I do that, my source is ready. Now, if you are using any source in a workflow, it can be used in two modes. The first mode is uh, by default the singleton mode. That means when the workflow starts, in this step, it reads the very first item inside the source and it passes on to the next step. And that is, uh, that's why it is a singleton. However, if you want to use it in iteration mode, you can do that. And for that, you go to the context menu and choose this option that says use as iterator. That means it is going to run this in loop and for each of the items in the source, it is going to run the entire workflow. So if I use as iterator, I can see here my, there is a port that is going to go to the next step. And next step is to run a data flow. So let's go ahead and drag and drop a data flow. That becomes my next step. We'll drag and drop. And you can see here there's a connection with the double lines. This double line means this is iteration type of step. So for each item in this file systems, uh, it is going to run this entire flow. So this is the first type of link that you can do inside Centerprise. So now we have taken the file system and the next step is run data flow. So let's go ahead and go to the properties of the data flow and point it to the data flow that we want to run. We want to run this uh, data flow. So I pick this one. And now I want to use the file path from the previous step inside this data flow. So that file is being used as a source inside this data flow. So since that is uh, internal to the data flow, we go to the next step and uh, it shows me all the parameters. Those are internal to this data flow. You can see here this has Excel source. 
So this data flow was created using this source. So now in place of leaving the source uh, as a fixed file, I will use the dollar notation that is for parameters and say file system one dot full path. We'll see in a bit why why I'm saying file system one dot full path. So I gave this parameter name and now this is being assigned to Excel source. That means when the data flow runs, it is going to resolve this parameter using this variable notation and going to find the the value for this variable that is file system wonderful path. Now let's examine what is file system wonderful path. So as you can see here in the previous step I have the file system one and if I expand it you can see here it has the full path file name and all these different properties those are applicable to the file system. That means when this iterator is running for each file that it finds in that in iterator it is going to give the full path and you can see here the name is file system one so dollar file system one that full path is going to be the the path of the file that it is going to find in the in the iterator so for each of the files it is going to supply that full path into the run data flow and the data flow is going to run using the excel file that it finds inside this iterator so now we understand how these two steps are connected now we are running the data flow and uh, you can see here this is the next step and the next step we have two options the first option is if it starts successfully or it fails to start because you can deploy it and uh, for some reason it may fail to start so uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, do a decision as the next step and decision is one of the workflow items it becomes the next step and uh, I connect this port to that going port and you can see here it is a solid line so this is the next different type of uh, linking in enterprise however if it fails to start you have another option and where you can uh, uh, take this step go to the other step and uh, that step is going to be executed only when this step fails to start and uh, let's go ahead and uh, send an email as we saw in the sample in the beginning and if it fails to start, I'm going to take this and uh, go to this step. In that case, I'll press Alt and uh, drag and drop this port onto this. You can see here it is in different color. That means if the step uh, fails to start, it goes directly to send email. And uh, you can go to the properties of the send email and, and you can specify all your details of email. So when this job is running, it comes to this step and it fails to start, it is going to execute this step however if it successfully runs it goes to decision now if you go to the decision go to the properties of it you're presented with uh, this uh, rules writing screen where I can uh, see the details of everything and uh, see I go to the run data flow output and you can see here I have all the items about how it ran the number of records rate successfully completed error messages uh, everything so I pick records with errors and my example is if my records with errors is uh, greater than 1000 that means if I if when the data flow is running and it encounters more than 1000 errors that means something is wrong with the data flow and I would like to be notified in that case I will use this rule and uh, this is my decision and if this happens you can see here there are two nodes yes and no if it happens I would do the same thing and I will send out an email so either it fails to start or it is running with too many errors in both cases I would like to send out an email and as you can see here this is the another type of the linking that that is shown with the dotted lines that is the output of a decision and say uh, in the other case when there are uh, less than thousand errors that means it ran successfully I would like to go to the next step and next step is to clean the file that I just ran and maybe delete that file and uh, for that a file system action I will take and that goes and becomes my next step and that is connected with the no and you can see here this becomes my next step so this is how we can uh, orchestrate this scenario and that's exactly what I had in the sample and uh, you can see here it is file system sources it is running data flow and is ch checking errors and uh, depending on yes or no it is going to either delete the source file 
or sending out an email to the owner. So this is how you can use different type of linking inside the workflow. Now let's take a step back and uh, examine one more concept in, in uh, workflow and that is the concept of mapping. So if I expand this node you can see here even each of the individual attributes they have this outgoing port that means you can map them to any other item and if I expand this I have inputs where I see uh, the job file path so for any box there are items that can be mapped in this case this is job file path that means this is a path of the real data flow that I'm running here and uh, say I wanted to even supply the job file path from outside I could have done that using any other external source and uh, by mapping this uh, outgoing port into this incoming port in this case uh, since we are uh, using a parameter that is internal to this data flow that's why you use the dollar notation and we supplied the file path from this inside the data flow but any parameter of the box can be mapped directly so that is another thing that is frequently used by the users to do mapping directly and when the next step runs it does that mapping and supplies the value to the next step. This concludes this uh, help video. Thanks for watching this video.